22nd regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Certainly. Effective communication requires more than an exchange of information. When done right, communication fosters understanding, strengthens relationships, improves teamwork, and builds trust. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll. There are 14 present. Alderman uh, Roman Duran and Jim Bourne are, are excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Sue, Joe's not here either. And Joe Heidemann is also excused. Thank you for letting me know. Next, we'll uh, move on to the approval of our minutes from the last meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there's no uh, resignations or appointments this evening. So next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have Debbie Day Milan. Debbie, if you could come up. Oops. And can I have your home address, Debbie? Yes, it's 1704 North 35th Street. Right. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, what benefits are Sheboygan taxpayers getting by allowing Aurora to build on the Field of Dreams? Aurora is definitely winning. Why sell this prime property for such a low price? Walmart paid $5 million for the Menards property, which was only 20 acres versus the 35-acre Field of Dreams. The Menards lot is in the town of Sheboygan, so the Field of Dreams should sell for closer to $7 million, not $2.5 million. Why did the school board not advertise the property and wait for, a competitive, for competitive offers? Why was Sheehan's confidentiality agreement with Aurora not questioned? He gave them exclusive rights over a park which was not for sale and which is useful and necessary for the Northside children and community. Why has the school board let the two finalists go and stop searching for a new superintendent, extending Sheehan's term and increasing his yearly salary to $175,000 yearly with extra benefits agreed upon in closed session when the Wisconsin State Superintendent of the DPI is only paid $121,000? If we allow Aurora to build upon the field of dreams, who would pay for the infrastructure costs like traffic lights and road work near the hospital? and sidewalks on the south side to the Boots and property as well as extending Taylor Drive South to get there? Who will pay for the demolition of Memorial Hospital that Aurora invested $11 million in over two years ago when claiming that they weren't planning on building a new hospital for at least 10 years? Whether it's the city or the Sheboygan Area School District paying the bills, in the end, it's us, the taxpayers. Why don't we encourage Aurora to build on their own south side property paying for an exit ramp that would go directly to their medical complex? This would alleviate the traffic that would become too heavy on the north side Field of Dreams location. By the way, has there been a traffic impact study for um, how a second hospital and medical center would affect the Field of Dreams essentially residential neighborhood? Allowing the mega corporation Aurora to buy a city park is setting a horrible precedent. Central Park in New York City is prized by everyone and would take in a lot of money if put up for sale. But city officials know that parks are what attract visitors and those wanting to move there. Our parks are the way we attract our youth back to Sheboygan. The more parks, the better. Trading one park for another is not the answer. Sheboygan will lose its attraction if its citizens fear that their local park could be sold to a developer. Today the field of dreams, tomorrow which park is on the chopping board? Maybe the East Parcel, if Aurora wants to expand further. And if Aurora is permitted to build on the Field of Dreams, it's only a matter of time until they demand the extension of Taylor Drive through Maywood, as was suggested in the, t in the past. 
The study at that time had determined that the cost was prohibitive because there was not enough traffic to justify extending Taylor Drive. But as soon as this new hospital complex gets built, Aurora will argue that this extension needs to be done for expedient service to their clients. We will have lost the most precious attraction of Sheboygan, Maywood and Evergreen Parks, where we all enjoy hiking, skiing, birding, picnicking, and the holiday lights show. The day that Taylor Drive is extended through Maywood, we will lose lots of nature lovers who will move elsewhere to more, a more pro-environment and pro-nature community. Once we allow a corporation to develop land already in use, we have let them take over. We lose our autonomy. We will have created a corporate monster, and it will no longer be within our control to stop Aurora from bulldozing its way through our natural resources. Let's not sacrifice one park for the promise of another. Let's safeguard all of our parks in every neighborhood and add to our park system, rather than eliminate any one of them. I can tell you that if we lose the haven that is the Maywood Evergreen Parkland, many more people than me will leave the city. And if you, your focus is only on amassing medical complexes all in the same neighborhood, you will attract people who don't care about the health care, which is inherent in parks, as a, opposed to the sick care which Aurora provides. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And next on the list is Alize Demoulin. Would you please come up to the mic? And Alize, can you give me your home address? Yes, I live at 1704 North 35th Street in Sheboygan. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. Thank you. So we keep talking about how Aurora is this wonderful corporation, and so I just wanted to bring up some of the problems that we face with Aurora. So first of all, if you look up their rating through the BBB, I'm sure you guys all know about that. It's the Better Business Bureau that bases its rating on 13 factors. And the, B the Aurora Healthcare Inc. is not a better, is not a BBB accredited business. Through their 13 factors, they received a D rating, and it was based off of, among other things, a failure to respond to eight complaints filed against the business, and three complaints filed against business against the business that were not resolved. Of the 88 complaints. It received a total of 88 complaints from its 89 years in business, and of the 14 reviews, 100% of them were negative. It received no neutral or positive reviews. The Aurora Healthcare Inc. has received 1.44 out of 5 stars based on 14 customer reviews, and that gets it to a BBB rating of D, so like a 4.01 scale if it was graded like letter grades that would receive a D. If we compare it to some other businesses in our community, Acuity received an A+, Acuity Insurance. Festival Foods received an A+, Bemis has <coughs> an A-, minus. American Orthodontics has an A+, plus. Sargento has an A-, minus. Kohler Company has a B+, plus, even though they had a lot of negative reviews, but they still got a B plus, so that means that Aurora is even lower. And Walmart received an A plus, even though they had 3,300 complaints against the business. So if Aurora is getting a D, that means that they are worse even than the 3,300 complaints of Walmart. So to consider allowing a business with such a low rating into our community at all is beyond my comprehension. Of these reviews, I printed out a bunch of them. As you can see, they go on forever. But I'm going to read a couple of these that they are not, you know, they are not the caring corporation that they have presented themselves as. So this one person said they were making monthly payments, but they still put my bill in collections without any notice. And not sure what I will do now, but Aurora billing should be as caring for people as they assess, and then I always thought that making payments in good faith was and still is a positive way of life. To anyone reading this, please be aware that Aurora Healthcare Billing has no compassion for no one. This really saddened me because now I'm left with medical issues and I don't know what to do. So, uh, and then 
The experience that I had at one of the Aurora Hospital facilities was dramatically worse than any other facility or organization I have ever dealt with before. Shocking and appalling are words I would use to describe the standards at this facility. The response to my consumer concerns and complaints by staff and upper management defied ethical standards in my opinion. Consumer beware, ask questions and know your patient rights as the organization applied minimal or less than minimal standards of care. And they performed a procedure without getting authorization from our insurance. So, I mean, there's a bunch more of these. They go on and on. So, basically, if, you, if we don't even know what we're getting into, you know, we're going to have serious problems because what if they don't even, you know, fulfill their financial obligations to the city and what they set up to do? Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this evening. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. On Sunday, December 4th at 1230 in the afternoon, Eleanor Revelis was lifeguarding at the adult lane swimming at the Sheboygan YMCA. There were three lap swimmers swimming when she noticed that a man had stopped swimming and was in front, uh, front float position and he was in the lane closest to the pool edge. She went up and asked him if he was okay. There was no response and he began to slip under the water. Eleanor yelled to clear the swimmers from the pool. She yelled for Taylor Jones, the second guard in the instruction pool, to call 911 and come and assist. Eleanor entered the water and brought him to the side of the pool. Taylor helped to lift the man out of the water. Eleanor sent Taylor to get help. Eleanor checked for a pulse and breathing. There was none, and so she began CPR. The man began to recover. Travis Bauman, the YMCA building uh, duty supervisor, came to assist. He turned the man on his side and told Eleanor to get the AED in case it would be needed. Travis confirmed that 911 had been called and the Y main desk was notified. They continued to monitor the man until EMS arrived. The paramedic on the scene prior to leaving the YMCA extended his appreciation to Ms. Revelis on her quick thinking and actions. He later called and spoke to her on the phone to check to see how she was handling the event. As a young adult of 17 years, Ms. Revelis has the training due to her being a lifeguard, but still, this is a large-scale event for anybody without experience. Ms. Revelis performed her job with skill and confidence and brings great credit to herself, the YMCA, and the city of Sheboygan. It's also his belief that Ms. Revelis saved this individual's life due to her quick actions as he was awake and talking prior uh, to being transported to the hospital. Uh, I'd like to call Eleanor up at this time. Eleanor uh, is 17 years old, a senior at North High. At North, she's involved in many clubs such as Blue Crew, Student Council, National Honor Society, and Expo. She was also on the soccer team for two years and has been a varsity swimmer all four years. Outside of school, Ellie is part of the Sheboygan Lakers figure skating club and spends countless hours volunteering for the Greek church. She has also been a Y member until, and also uh, started working at the Y in July as a lifeguard and swim instructor. For your actions on December 4th, I'd like to present this um, medallion, the Mayor's Medal of Bravery, and thank you very much for all of these great things you did that day. I'd like to call up uh, Taylor Jones. Taylor's a lifeguard. Taylor Jones is 19 years old and was born in Washington State. He, along with, 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 his, with her little brother and sister, <coughs> grew up in, in being addicted to the water. Recently moved to Wisconsin to be with friends and to further the edu her education. In the past, had been a USA swimmer for many years and found that lifeguarding was a good way to put her skills to use. Taylor, we'd like to present you this Mayor's Medal of Bravery for your actions that day.
And next I'd like to bring up Travis uh, Brom. Travis is 24 years old and has been employed at the Sheboygan County YMCA since March of 2008. He currently teaches Y swim lessons. He's a coach in the Y swim team, a lifeguard and after school supervisor for the Y grant school program and a YMCA buildings duty supervisor. Travis is currently enrolled at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh studying in the education program with the goal of becoming an elementary education school teacher. Outside of school, his work uh, and his work, his main hobby is fishing and he also enjoys playing hockey at the Blue Line Ice Center. Travis, congratulations and we have a medallion for your actions that day. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like, like to bring up Chief Mike Romas for a few additional remarks. I just wanted to say, um, I'm going to kind of piggyback on the mayor's remarks. Um, I received a call at home from my paramedics about your, what you did at the Y that day. And he said it was absolutely amazing. And for people that young, as young as you, and I know maybe you don't think you're young, but you're young. Um, to, to perform under pressure like this is really quite an accomplishment. It is, and I want you to know that. I've been here for three years. I haven't seen a standing ovation by the council very often, and I just saw three in a row. So can we give them another hand, please? <laughs> also, also, I wanted to say that um, this is a group effort. I know all three of you participated. But I also want to thank the direction and the leadership at the YMCA. Somebody hired these individuals, somebody vetted them, somebody gave them the equipment, somebody had policies and procedures, and all the things that were required for them to succeed. So I think you deserve a big round of applause too. Thank you. And then just one other announcement. Uh, again, uh, we want to promote the uh, New City e-newsletter. That's uh, if you want to sign up to receive that. Uh, there's a link on the city website. There's a banner ad that's very easy to find. And hopefully you'll find this new uh, newsletter very interesting and informative. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, this will include items 2.3 through 2.16. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Jose. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we just break out 2.5 so I can get a better understanding? Um, did you have a specific question about 2.5? My, my question is, are it says it was approved by the Finance Committee. Are we, if we approve this, are we de facto agreeing with the 2017 long-term plan as well? Or is this just the council acknowledging that those limited people on the Finance Committee agree with it? No, if you're voting tonight uh, to agree with that recommendation, then you're voting to accept it as well. Then I request that it be broken out. Okay, 2.5 will be voted on separately. We'll take that one first. Is there any other discussion on 2.5? Seeing none, uh, we need to uh, call the roll for 2.5. Actually, we can do a voice. We can do voice on that. Okay, all those in favor of 2.5, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Thank you, motion passes. Then we're dealing with all the other items um, ex except 2.5. Uh, Alder Person Lewandowski. I would like to have a separate vote on item 2.10. Okay, 2.10 will be next. Is there any discussion on 2.10? Alder Person Lewandowski. I just want to say, as I've been going around talking to a lot of citizens of Sheboygan, their number one complaint is about how bad the streets are, and then the city is spending money on the bicycle trails. And I'm going to vote against this just because people are complaining about the city spending money on the bicycle trails. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Nay. I'm Motion. Sorry. Who said nay? Three. Motion passes. Then we're back to the original motion, except for those two items. Is there any other discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? I will, hold on. Denies. Motion passes. <laughs> Moving on to reports of officers, item 3.1 will lie over till our next meeting. Under resolutions, uh, 4.1 is the resolution 194 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the finance director to enter into a contract with Wisconsin Bank and Trust for a corporate card program. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is resolution number 195 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing transfer of appropriation in the 2017 budget to establish an appropriation for environmental remediation costs related to the Portscape apartment project. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to refer to finance. Okay, is there a second? Second. We have a motion uh, to refer this to finance, and we'll just accept that. I don't think there's any need for a vote then. Uh, next, we'll move on to item 4.3, and that will lie over. And 4.4 also will lie over. Items 4.5 through 4.10 will be referred to various committees. Alder Person Lewandowski. I would ask that item 4.4 also be sent to Historic Preservation. That's, that's lying over, so Chad, would you like to respond to that? This is for a transfer of appropriations related to two projects, a street project, which I believe is either North 10th Street <coughs> or North 12th Street, and the development of the skate park. So if you believe that those two documents have a relation to the Historic Preservation Commission, then it can go there, but I think it makes sense for it just to lie over, given the fact of the two projects that it's funding. Any objection to that, Alderperson Lewandowski? No. Okay, thank you. So that 4.4 will lie over. Under reports of committees, 5.1 is an RC by number 310 of 1617 by law and licensing. Tumors referred RO number 188 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license applications and recommends that the beverage operator's license application number 15. 9-4 be denied based upon her failure to accurately reveal relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the license activity, and her record as a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Is second. there a second? Under discussion? Is Faith Gabriel C. here? Faith is not here today nor was she able to attend the two requests to our meeting. So we have denied her uh, application because she did not cooperate with our committee. Thank you for that report. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC number one, 311 of 1617 by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 194 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Recommends that taxi cab driver's license application 1625 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I remove that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Uh, we have a motion on the floor under discussion. Is there a Jesse Rugello here? Jesse was unable to attend, nor was he able to attend the two meetings that we requested him to appear at, so we did deny it due to failure to cooperate with our committee. Thank you for that comment. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 313 of 1617 by the Law Licensing Committee to whom was referred RO number 194 of 1617 by the City Clerk submitting various license application and recommends that taxi cab driver's license application number 1622 be denied <coughs> based upon his record of violations related to the license activity and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Gail Nelson available or here? She is not here and she did not appear on the two occasions she was requested to come to our meeting, so we denied her due to lack of cooperation with the committee. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 314 of 1617 by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 194 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends the taxi cab driver license application 1614 be denied based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Is Kenneth Crane here? Kenneth was asked on two occasions to appear before our committee and chose not to attend. Therefore, his license was denied due to his lack of cooperation with our committee. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? See none. Will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Motion passes. Item 5.5 is RC number 315 of 1617 by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 194 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends that the taxi cab driver's license application 1627 be denied based upon his failure to accurate review all relevant convictions on his application, his record of, of violations related to the license activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion. Uh, they've got motion on the floor under discussion. Is Mr. Craig Brishner here? <coughs> Mr. Bushner was unable to make it this evening as well as the two requests to our committee. So the committee has denied his application due to lack of cooperation with our committee. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. <clears throat> Uh, 
13 eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is RC number 326 of 1617 by finance to whom was referred resolution number 193 of 1617 direct referral by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish revenue and appropriation for contracted services for planning and preliminary engineering services related to the expansion of the business park. Sheboygan Business Center and recommends that the resolution be passed. All the person wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is RC number 327 of 1617 by Public Works to whom is referred General Ordinance number 37 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger, repealing the, and recreating section 74-56 of the Municipal Code relating to alcohol possession, consumption, and parks, and recommends that the attached substitute ordinance be passed. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adapt, and pass a substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Holshue. Yes, I wonder if Alderman Bellinger would just kind of um, tell us what the, the new recommendations are. Alderperson Bellinger. And for our, our people watching at home. Sure. Um, sh sure, that, that's no problem. Uh, there's been an issue in the past with the police uh, regarding uh, Water Street Park and uh, Riverside Park, and um, there have been issues or issues related to alcohol consumption and drinking uh, right next to the playgrounds where little kids are playing and families are participating in activities, and it was uh, it became a habitual problem, and the, the police came to. Uh, Public Works Department and requested that there be a change in the ordinance. Um, the attorney Adams drafted the substitute resolution and that's what it, it um, contains. It, it just prohibits alcohol in those two parks and uh, it doesn't really affect anything else as far as the city's parks go. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item five point, or rather six point one, under matters laid over, is RO number two twenty four of sixteen seventeen by the city clerk submitting as a matter of record the Sheboygan County Humane Society's annual finance report for twenty fifteen with a twenty sixteen report to follow in May. Alderperson Donahue. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.2 is resolution number 192 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf being a declaration of official intent of the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin to reimburse a, an expenditure with proceeds of borrowing or borrowing authorized by the issuer for the project of the 2017 uh, model Boomag CR352 paving machine equipped with a uh, Carlson 8 to 15 foot wide screen and accessories and training with the maximum principal amount of the borrowing or borrowing to be incurred to reimburse the expenditures for the described purposes is reasonably expected on the date thereof to be uh, 358 uh, million Thousand nine hundred thousand nine hundred dollars. <laughs> Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Thank you for that motion. Is there support? Second. We have a second. The uh, item is on, dis on the floor for discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes. Motion passes. For other matters after the agenda was prepared, I'll turn it over to Assistant City Attorney Rose Simon Silva. Welcome. Thank you. 7.1 is a resolution by Alder Person Wolf authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish revenue and appropriation for contracted services for Fire Station 2 architectural and engineering services associated with the reconstruction of the roof structure. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.2 is uh, RO number 230-16-17 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. And a 7.3 is a resolution by Alder Person Wolf authorizing the Mayor to execute the 2017 amended general contract between Sheboygan County Health and Human Services Department and Shoreline Metro regarding transportation for elderly and disabled individuals. That will be referred to the Transit Committee. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <laughs>